IT Talent College Tutorials presents Chris Milanos from Incentro with how big data is used to make telecom companies more profitable. So the case I'm going to cover today is a telecom company, a triple play telecom company. So you have internet, mobile, uh, television, and you want to do stuff like reduce calls to the call center or maybe sell them a, um, sell them a much larger product or even reduce churn to so the possibility that they'll move to, another, to, a, to a competitor. Now, you don't have much data about the customer. You typically only have their address, what other products do they have from you, and maybe how many calls they call the call center. I mean, you do have more data, but you're not allowed to use it for marketing purposes, particularly in Holland. Uh, other countries have slightly different rules, but let's start with simply just knowing a little bit about your customer. Now, this is the data that you're going to try to predict whether a person might call the call center, or you might be able to send them a larger product, or maybe um, prevent them from going to a competitor. So what you do is you pull the data to some kind of local platform, like maybe your local laptop or some kind of uh, analytics server. You join the data, so it might, it might be completely separate tables. You put them all together, you make one big table, which is essentially a row for every customer. And at the end, it had a one or a zero saying the person churned, the person didn't churn. Or the person called the call center, the person didn't call the call center. Now, you use this, this particular data, you run it through an algorithm, maybe a GLM or a random forest, and the, the output is supposed to be able to predict, without knowing what the outcome is, what the outcome would likely have been. And you can then evaluate whether the model is good by checking to see, did my prediction match up with what actually happened? The more predictions that match up, the better your model. At a certain point, you decide, you know what, this is actually worthwhile to maybe put, behind, uh, put some money behind. Then you say, OK, make this, make this particular script, this particular model, a stable model. Uh, that whenever it runs, it never produces errors, or that it hardly ever produces errors. Like, for instance, if a column has a bad uh, data type inside of it, that it says, OK, instead of using this column, I'll use another column. Simple, basic stuff like that that you might, be, might happen on from time to time. But it has to be able to be stable, that not, nothing can ever prevent the model from actually running. And if it does, it throws up a flag saying, I have an error. So you have it stable. You, you put it inside of a container. This is a way that you can, uh, I say, kind of contain the script where it doesn't have influence on other models that are running on the same platform. It knows exactly where to get its data from, where to put, it, where, where to put its data. It knows what CPUs it can be used to run the model. Now you drop this model onto a much larger platform with a whole bunch of other models. So think of one model produces the probability for customers to churn. A completely separate model will produce the probability for customers to churn for another product. And then maybe another model produces the probability that they'll call the call center. So all these models are run, run in parallel. It's a, maybe a timer that says, OK, start this model at 2 o'clock in the morning, start this model at 3 o'clock in the morning. And then at the end of the day, they're all they're made all their reports so that the marketeers and the call center people can actually use the, the predictions to figure out who they have to call or maybe who, who they have to maybe offer another product to. Alongside the predictions, you also have like uh, run reporting. Like, for instance, did the model run quickly? And uh, maybe how, what the accuracy of the model was. But Essentially, you're kind of looking for the scores, the probability that customers will do some particular thing. This is fine for batching data, the data that you can maybe just do once a day, and the next, the next day you can take action on the data. But you might want to do real-time systems, particularly, for instance, where sales is concerned, particularly when you have to have a website. So as the user is traversing your website, you kind of want to be able to start predicting what type of product they want to buy. So that way you can show them more targeted advertisements, or maybe even change the whole structure of your website to better suit what they're probably going to do. Uh, for instance, have them that they find exactly the information they need so they don't end up calling your call center because call centers are quite expensive. So the problem is you typically have like a very limited time to get their attention. Like for instance, with this banner, the, that person might only stay on that page for maybe a second. And that banner has even less time to get your, to get your attention. So preferably you have the banner that has, is almost specifically the product that the person would likely want to buy so that they can click on the, on the banner and they go directly to the page which explains them the product and maybe increasing the chance that the person wants to buy that product. Now, your website's complicated. A lot of different pages. People can go from one page, go to the next, press the back button, go all over the place. So, and then eventually maybe buy a product. But that gives you a pattern. It gives, so you're assuming that, a, that people technically don't, are not really that much different. They kind of traverse your website in the same way if they're looking for a particular product. So you can match the prefix, the beginning of their pattern, and then say, oh, I know what you want. Here's a banner that shows you maybe exactly what you want. Or maybe here's a chat window so you don't call us. Uh, and therefore, you help them along with their goal. So you have a website, person clicks on a menu button, goes through a bunch of different pages. This produces a log. So think of it as the uh, one line says, person X viewed page X. 
and then, then person X views page Y, person X views page Z, hold on, and maybe that for more, maybe multiple sections. Now you know the people who actually bought products. So the idea is to then find the patterns of people who buy particular products, and then use those patterns to maybe catch users who have not yet bought your product, or maybe not yet called the call center, and give them a little push into helping them do what you want them to do, to save you money. So an example of how you might do this is how you, put, you, you do clustering. So you take one page, another page, and another page, so the home page, uh, maybe uh, all mobile, and you can see that it form clusters by how many times a person particularly viewed a page. Now, this is only for three pages, so you might want to do it for like thousands of pages because your website's huge. So then you have to map, kind of, if you want to make a visualization of it, you have to map multidimensional space onto two-dimensional space. And you can see here by this plot that it's very well clustered. So there are separate clusters for different types of products people want to buy. So I can, how you can visualize this is that a user comes in and maybe he's sitting somewhere here, and as he's traversing the page, the, the model kind of gets a better idea of where he like, what he likely wants to buy. And if he's close to this cluster, he says, oh, he probably wants to buy ADSL fiber, so I'll show him ADSL fiber um, banner. Or maybe he goes somewhere else and says, oh, and then he maybe wants to buy mobile. So it continuously refines its predictions onto um, what it's likely to buy. Now, Fine, now you have a prediction of what a person likely wants to buy, but you have to do something about it because you have to know what banner to show, what slice is going to work. This is kind of where A-B testing comes into con um, consideration. So you have a prediction that says, person probably wants to buy mobile. You come up with some marketeers that gives you a creative idea of how maybe to entice that user, and now you're actually going to take action on that. Now, so you do A-B testing is by altering your website in a particular way that you think might help the user, and you do two different variants, maybe the old version and the new version and you can test whether the new version entices the user a lot more than the old version. And if so, then that's the one you go with. The website now looks like that. And maybe next month, the marketer comes up with a new idea and you test that against the old one and see which one works out better. Ideas that don't make it, that fall out, you don't do. Ideas that do make it, you continue with. And that's pretty much it.